Hi friends, welcome to another weekly edition of QTip videos brought to you by dataplatformcentral.com. In this edition, we are going to see another example of a close integration between Power Automate and Power BI. We have already seen in a previous video how Power Automate can be used in conjunction with Power BI to overcome few limitations which are in Power BI. This edition, we are going to see one more popular use case where Power BI can be effectively integrated with Power Automate so as to achieve the requirement. The use case goes like this. So we have a table inside a SQL Server database which is used as a control mechanism for a background job. Say uh, there is a file processing mechanism where files come at regular intervals and are getting processed. And there is a file process control table in your SQL Server database which is tracking the progress of this process like uh, what all files are coming after each file is getting processed what was the processing outcome how many rows were processed so all the background data corresponding to the process is getting logged inside the table now the use case is that the data from this process control table has to be made available on a report for analysis by the ops team so that they can find out if there was any issues with the current background processes so that they can take the corrective action as early as possible so let's see how we can make use of power bi automate in this case so as to automatically reflect the data changes that is happening on a on-premise database onto a power bi report for this purpose we will be first creating a push data set inside a power bi once we create a push data set to a Power BI workspace, then we can make use of Power Automate to push the data that is coming from a database table to the push data set. That way, when we create a report out of this push data set, the data will be available inside the report close to real time for analysis by the ops team. So let's see how this can be implemented. The first step in this illustration is to create a push data set inside our Power BI workspace so that we can use it for pushing the data from the database. For this purpose, we can have different ways to create the data set. For the sake of this illustration, I am directly going to the documentation for the push data sets and using the try it feature there to use the sandbox environment to create a push data set. So for creating the data set, we need to go to the documentation for push data sets and there is an API called uh, Post Dataset in Group. This API is what should be used for creating a dataset inside a workspace. So here you have this Try It option. Click on the Try It option so that it will ask you to log into the corresponding username. So I am logging into my Power BI username. So now through this, if I pass the workspace ID here, we will be able to create a dataset inside this. So let's go to the Power BI portal now. So inside the Power BI portal, I am going to create it inside a workspace called Test Workspace. When you have the workspace open, you can find out the ID from the address bar itself. This ID corresponds to the ID of the workspace. So copy that ID and come back to the page and inside the group ID, pass the ID that you have copied from the URL of that Power BI portal where the workspace is connected. Now you need to pass the body for that body for that workspace will contain the name of the workspace, the name of the table that is declared inside as well as the schema of the table. That means the different fields along with its data types. So let's now pass the body to create a data set with a table inside it. We have a corresponding table called file process control inside our database. We will be creating the data set with the same structure as this table as we are going to push the data from this table to the data set. So here we have uh, the fields like file id, file name, file arrival date etc. The same columns will be created inside the table which we are defining inside the data set. So now we have created the body based on the structure of the table and the data set will have all the fields corresponding to the table inside our database. Once this is created and uh, copied inside the workspace, we can click on run to or execute the API. Once you execute the API, we will get the response at 201 indicating that the dataset as well as the table has been created successfully. 
so that means the data set is now created inside our workspace let's go and check it inside our workspace just refresh it and you will be able to find out the new data set called operational data push so here we have the new data set called operational data push that we have created from the api call now we will be using power automate to push the data to this data set when the data gets added to the database table now let's see how we can use power automate for this scenario let's go to the home page of the power automate and we are going to create a new flow now which will look at the database changes happening inside the file process control table and correspondingly it will push the new data to the push data set that we have created inside our workspace so let's start with an automated cloud flow click on it and it will ask you for a name so let's say remote push data to power bi data set and we need to check for a sql server related flow so you are going to look for the data changes that is happening inside sql server and accordingly we are going to push it to the power bi data set so you will get a item called when an item is created sql server this is the flow that we should be using the first flow step so here we need to connect to the server which is inside our machine so for that purpose we have already a data gateway which is set up and it is running in my machine so i'll be using this data uh, gateway to create a connection here so the connection is already created and uh, so here we have multiple connections so i can use any one of the connection so i am going to use the connection which points to my control db database that is where my file process uh, data uh, table exists so i will take the connection properties and uh, choose the server name from the connection settings choose the database from the connection settings and when you click on the table name it will show you all the data tables available currently there is only one table available inside my test database which is the file process table which is what we want so if you click on the advanced option you have some other options also in case you need to specify a filter or any other top count or anything you can specify that in this case we are not going to specify any of those we are just going to push the data as it comes in the table directly to the push data set now the first step is over now we can click on the new step here we need to push the rows to the power bi data set for this purpose search for power bi and you get a lot of the tasks associated with power bi we will be using the add rows to the data set task which is available inside so click on add rows to the task data and it will ask you for the workspace uh, id for that you have to set up a connection to the power bi assuming that you already have your power bi connection set up you will get the all the workspaces specified inside in this case we will be selecting the workspaces test because that is the workspace inside which we have created our operational data push uh, data set created using the push data set option so if you remember if you go back to the power bi portal you can check that it is under the workspace called test so that is why i am uh, selecting test as the workspace and inside that you can select the data set which is operational data push and so when you select the data set here it should be a push data set only push data set uh, will be available inside this so now for the table we can select which table you want again it's the file process control table we have created only one table inside the data set now comes the part where you have to map the field so we have these columns available inside the data set and we need to map it to the corresponding columns coming from the table for that just click on here it will automatically give you the options depending on the number of columns which are coming from your table from the first task so select the corresponding columns file id you can select file id file name you can select the file name and similarly for every columns select the corresponding columns that is coming from the first flow now all the columns are now selected and mapped so now you can save your uh, flow once you are saving your flow you need to test the flow before you test the flow make sure you go and create a blank report inside power bi so that once the flow runs you can go and check the report to see if the data is pushed to the data set so for that let's first create a blank report go to power bi portal click on the data set you have and there is an option to create a report from top from scratch select that option and it will give you the famous power bi editor window where you can create your visuals select a table visual and just drag and drop the fields from your data set make sure that you are choosing do not summarize because you want the detailed data here so you have selected all the columns from your uh, data set and now you can see that the report is blank this is because no data has been posted to the data set yet now we will start the flow and see what happens when we add a new row to the table click on the test button inside your power automate and it will give you two options select the manual option for now and then click on test then the flow will start running once the flow starts running we can go and add the data from the database table and see how it gets posted to the data set and then appears inside our report so it has started running 
go to the database and then post a sample value so we are posting a sample value like test123 for dot csv and we are posting some values here now once we post this this is going to come inside our power bi code so we have now executed it now let's go back to the flow yeah the flow has now run successfully so what it has done is like just posted the data to the power bi data set now let's go and refresh the report and see as you see the data has now arrived inside your power bi report indicating that whatever rows you are adding inside the data table now the flow will automatically push it to the power bi report now let's save the flow and try it once again so the flow is now running let's try posting one or two data from our uh, database and see the report whether it is reflecting we have added another row to the table now let's go back and uh, try refreshing the report after a few minutes delay you can come and see that the flow has now succeeded now you go back and check the report you will be able to see the new row of data inside your report as expected the second row is also now open so you can continue this you can post multiple rows and you can try this out one thing to take care is that there are a few caveats when you are trying to implement this first thing is that your database table should have a primary key only if your database table has a primary key power automate can identify it as a table from which data changes can be captured second thing is that the data set that you are creating inside power bi should be a push data set and third one is that you need to use this only for use cases where there is medium level of data and the updates happens less frequently that means the appending of the data or the new data gets added less frequently if you are doing it for a table where the data is getting added in huge volumes for every row added to your table the, the automate flow will get triggered and it will cause lots of flows to be created and it will overcome its throttling threshold and finally all the additional uh, flow actions will get failed so this is only suitable for the cases like in this use case where we are tracking a file process mechanism where the file comes like say every one hour or two hour or something like that which means we are speaking about adding a new row inside the table one row inside the table every one hour so like this kind of less frequency less volume situations this is possible this is not a replacement for the cases where we have such a huge transaction table with lots of data getting added uh, in every minute so in such cases if you are trying to implement this kind of uh, method you will end up choking the power automate and all the additional actions that it gets triggered will be failed as it goes over the throttle limitations so as seen from this quick demo we can use power automate in conjunction with power bi for achieving a use case like this where we need to update a power bi data set based on a data changes happening on a on premise sql server database close to real time this will be mostly suited for ops related reporting requirements as specified in this demonstration hope you find this quick video useful as usual keep sending your feedback and Feel free to subscribe to my channel and click on bell icon to get notifications for future useful videos like this. Meet you soon with another useful tip. Till then, thanks for your time.